It was the news much of the world was waiting for. Last week, the federal government announced its first interest rate cut since 2020. So what does that mean exactly? And specifically today, how does that impact your retirement? Safe Harbor Retirement Group President Corey Sickles always back with us in this sponsored segment to talk about this today. Good to see you, Corey. Good to be here, Robin. All right, so let's get a bit of education first because some people might think like, what does that even mean to me, right? To the everyday consumer. So what does a rate cut mean? Well, well, all that means is, is the rates that banks charge each other to loan money now is cheaper. Okay. Right? Right. So we haven't actually had a rate cut in over four years. Um, so it's gone up quite a bit over the last four years. But now I think we're, we're finally in the, I, can, I, I, I would assume maybe at least one more rate cut for the rest of this year. Okay. And then probably some rate cuts in 2025 and 2026. Okay. Now. By doing that, what's that really mean to us, the consumer, right? Right. So what we're going to be able to see is mortgage rates probably drop. You're going to be able to see credit card interest rates probably drop. And the one thing that we'll talk about probably here in a few minutes, but it's also going to have probably have an impact on um, what you can make on CDs and, and interest rates like that as well. Exactly. And I, and I think a lot of it, people always think of mortgages and loans when they hear about interest rates, right? So that, Correct. how does that impact somebody who already has a loan, a homeowner, for example? Well, you know, the, you know, the, really the one question is, is how many times they're gonna do it, right? right. We, don't, we don't know that. Yeah. But the one thing that, that it does make sense sometimes is maybe you, you could possibly refinance, depending on where, where you actually bought, got your mortgage at. Now, the nice part about it is, is from a mortgage standpoint, if you have a lower interest rate, that means your your if you if you know if it's a new mortgage now your your cost per month is lower. Right. Now that also means you can also afford maybe even a, a more expensive house. Exactly. So okay. so largest purchases are actually good as well. Now, as you know, it's one of those things. You look at gas prices. When gas goes up, it goes up quickly, but it sure doesn't come down, does it? No, it does not. And, yeah. and, and, and I think you'll, what you'll probably see it, it took a long time for interest rates to get high. For, I'm talking about for the consumer from a CD or from a savings standpoint, but they'll probably drop a little quicker than they went up. Okay. All right. So then let's get into the retirement aspect of this, right? Because you have all this money that you've already saved, this nest egg. How does that then impact anything when you're retiring? Well, if we go back four or five years, you know, if you go back, interest, you might have got a CD for one or two percent. I mean, and that, that could have been for like three, five, seven years, right? Okay. So, so we, we really couldn't make a whole lot of money from, from banks. Now, what do you see today? Well, interest, you know, interest rates or CDs might be four or five percent. So you've been able to actually put money in a safe type of, you know, it's safe. You can't lose any money off of it. And you've made, made a good interest. Now, it's a whole different discussion whether that actually kept up, kept up with inflation. Right, right. right. But, but the whole point of it is, is what's going to happen is, is now those interest rates are going to start dropping. Now you're going to have to start going out and looking at different places to try to keep up with inflation long term for retirement. Okay. All right. So then if we are talking to somebody who, it, does it change anything as far as, you know, the amounts you're taking out, things that have already been established, or is this just for kind of those newer loans and newer things that you've, you've purchased and maybe not even cashed in yet? Well, I, yeah, it, it, it's, you know, when you do a refinance, you always kind of, everyone wants to get the best, you always want to get the best deal. Best deal, right. Right. So the question is, is when, when is going to be the best deal? And I think it, no one knows that. But you'll, you know, I, I, I can remember when I bought my first house back in 1999, I think interest rates were around six or seven percent. And I probably refinanced maybe two or three times over a period of time. Right. Right. Yes. In order in order to save money. And I think people need to start looking at that. You know, credit card rates are going to start dropping. And hopefully, you know, a lot of our viewers out there don't have a whole lot of credit card debt in general, because that, that you know, obviously that would have a big impact. But 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 just in general, and, you know, the money's going to be a lot cheaper now for, for the consumers and more importantly for businesses, too, because that means they can also hire and, and do other things and invest into the companies. OK, which, yeah, we like to see that right. little economic growth from that. And I I, I think if we refinanced and it went down to maybe 2% at one point, are, you think we're going to see those numbers or should we? I think that's going to be like a, year, a few years off okay. when it comes to that. Okay, that wouldn't be anytime soon. I don't think that would be anytime soon. Okay. But, you know, but from an investment standpoint, you know, there's a lot of different options out there that people are going to, now you have to say, how can I make more money 
off of my off of the money that I just have sitting in cash. And I think that's where you know meeting with an advisor, we can show you different types of products out there, where you might want to invest in things that uh, dividends, you know, in blue chip type of stocks. You know, we have we have a lot of different types of investments. Bonds might be end up being a good buy. Everyone's situation is different. Okay. But I think that's why you need to really come in and sit down with an advisor. And you can do that complimentary meeting with Corey and his team. Just give him a call, go to the website, and schedule that today. Corey, thank you so thank much. Thank you, Robin.